We do you see that? Huh? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. Hook. Put that hook right into these corners here to attach. So I saw this hummingbird feeder in the store that I thought was kind of nice. Had a nice red bottle. I don't know what kind of bottle it is, but I'll show it to you. I remember I have one at home. So I thought I have one of these bottles. So when I try to make a bird feeder myself using that bottle, I decided to use this sort of a basic disposable Tupperware thing for the feeder part. So this is gonna sit on top of that like that. Well, actually it's gonna go into it a little bit, but we'll figure that out later. Okay, so I'm gonna cut a hole in this and attach it to this. Trace an outline, top of the bottle onto this, and then cut it out. Look at that, look at that circle. So I'm gonna cut that circle out. I'm gonna go on the inside of the circle so it is a tight seal. Ah, smart, you're moving the, the lid, not your knife. I want the uh, bottle to have ne like the nectar I'm gonna make in it. You're gonna make in it? And then the uh, nectar's gonna come out of the bottle into this part, the feeder part. So I want it to be gravity fed. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. Okay, so. Yeah, okay. So the water stops when it's the surface of the water in the bowl here, like right there. That's a lot of juice. Blame it on my juice. That's okay. I just want the uh, their beaks to be able to get to it from the hole that's going to be on top in the, the lid. Okay. Do you have hummingbirds around here? I don't, I don't know. We need to put uh, holes, huh? For the hummingbirds to stick their beaks into, so that should be about one eighth of an uh, inch. diameter inch. Looks good to me. What you doing there, Pally? Cleaning these holes up well. Yeah. I don't know if I'm actually doing that. Really make sure these imaginary hummingbirds <laughs> have a hole to get into. Four at a time. Don't bring a don't bring a whole gang. Now we're gonna glue. The glue. Like that. Do you want to put it on the thing? Mm, there. Suck it there. Oh. Did you melt it? Uh, yeah, the tip of this melted it. So mm. I'm going to fill that with some whole baby. Oh, there you go. Mm, got a little crazy on that one. <laughs> okay. I can't help you out anymore. Oh, it's going inside. Oh, it's going inside the hole? Yeah. Jeez. This is a five by five inch piece of wood. Mm. Five and a half by five and a half. It really doesn't matter. And I got this, uh, this gig set up over here where I've been drilling out these holes for another project. This happened to work that this fit hey, the same. Yeah, he's been, he's been doing that and we just saw that this fit right in there nicely. So we're just going to make a little platform. So we got my whole bit in here. Line them all up, because that hole right there is already in the center. Oh. Oh. Yeah, didn't mm. halfway. And you come over here. You get sandpaper from your very organized sandpaper drawer. This is going to be outside. Should we seal it or burn it? Yeah, okay. As recovered from the old piano that we tore apart in previous videos, link down here. Where's the link? What? Down here. Down there. See how it fits in there nice? There you go. Right to that lip. We're gonna burn it. I'll hold it and you burn it. That's up. So this method from Japan called Shoshigibon. Oh. Shoshigibon. Okay. Shoshigibon? You're asking, you're asking me, man. Is uh, burning wood uh, to... Um, protect it against the elements and... Oh, you know what? 
No? There you go. So Chushigi Ban is, uh, I'm having trouble with lighting this. Basically dehydrating the wood and burning off all the softwoods so only the hardwoods left, making it more rot and mold resistant as well as fire resistant. Pretty cool method. I'm gonna super bring this, so then we'll scrape it down and that's, that's how you know it's, it's done right. It's supposed to get to a level that they call crocodile skin, which is it, or alligator skin. So you can see there the, the skin is kind of flat. it all burned up. Yeah, it's good like that actually. You want me to spray with a polyurethane? Yeah, okay, why not? Can't hurt. I like to get all over my hands too. <laughs> I can do that. Yep, hook. Put that cook right into these corners here to attach this cook. to the uh, to the bottle. What are these for again? To attach this tray to the bottle. Because the bottle's gonna be uh, like a rope, kind of like a. a so rope the, the rope's bag. gonna go on these. Yeah. This mm. is your idea. I don't know why you're asking me. Mm. The glue is dry now. But, uh. Wait, okay. Yeah. We're just gonna shore it up with this caulk that I have. Alright. There you go. So we're flying by the seat of our pants here. We decided we're gonna glue the rope to the end of the bottle here. And then let's see where it goes from there. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Alright, so I'll take this end and stick it on there. So we, we wanted need some loops. Two. That, and I'll do one over here. Guys, we're new to the hot glue gun game, so. This is a brand new hot glue gun, but you got it. Mm -hmm. That look great. Huh? Does that look great? Sure. So you see how? Yeah. I'm gonna tie strings from here up into one knot, and then like have them hang from one string. Yeah. And then from these down to the, the these hooks. guys, the hooks, to hold them, the tray up. So I put the rope through one of the loops down here. And then it's long enough to tie together. Uh... Well, what do you think of the way this looks, first of all? It's hard to tell because it's all... It looks a little much, I guess. You just mm -hmm. want to take two of them out. Mm. much rope at the bottom. Wait, okay, but what do you think about that look? I think it looks better. <laughs> Let's undo all of this. <laughs> Is that too much? How can we simplify it? I don't know. Should we have 
to start from square one. So we're gonna do a spindle at the top. We're gonna take this all apart. Yeah. So spindle <laughs> at the top, and then ropes that go down to the four hooks, and then one that goes up. I'm try to simplify it a little bit. We want a little ham right here. <laughs> In a little bit, okay. <laughs> Look, John TV. <laughs> no way I'm not. Yeah, it looks good. Better? Yeah. Okay. Some time later. I have some empty soda cans over here. I'm gonna cut those up and try to make um, tin flowers to stick onto the bottom of the, the bird feeder to make it look like there's flowers there. So the hummingbirds will come over and do it. But later on, I'm gonna spray paint the, the flowers that I cut out of those with some red spray paint. Maybe I got some yellow spray paint too somewhere. Just bright colors that'll attract the, the birds to them. So now I've got my four pieces of tin here from the soda cans. I'm going to cut the basic flower shapes about uh, that big, three inches maybe. I'm going to use a utility blade to cut the flower shapes out. I'm just going to wing it, I guess, uh, see what we come up with. Maybe I should draw it first. Maybe I'll draw. I'll draw it first. two of those and then kind of do two layers. That's the symbol for doing two layers. So we'll cut this one out. This is a little bit harder than I thought it was going to be. This is probably a bad idea because I could cut my thumb right off. Not very big. And I'm putting these like here. I don't know if I put them here. It's kind of too far down. I think I feel like so maybe I'll put them on the edge here like this. Just one on each side. And uh, maybe I'll paint this red end in the inside here too. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. Make a bunch more of these and then stick them on there and see how it looks. So I just cut out a, a bigger version of this one over here. And I just layered them together. Um, I think I only have red, so I think I'll just paint these both red and see how that looks. I've got my what appear to be throwing stars all cut up, but they are in fact my flower petals. I decided to give these a once over with sandpaper before I paint them so the paint sticks. Probably should have done that before I cut them out, but I just thought to do it now, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna spray paint them red. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I decided uh, I want to spray paint the bottom of the dish too. Um, I don't know if you can see, but uh, I did sand it a little. 
so we'll have better uh, paint adhesion. So hopefully that'll be attractive to the hummingbirds. I mean, I missed a little spot there, but it's not that big a deal. Uh-oh. Well, this is what it looks like all together. I hung it on my front porch here, right off there's a hook there, so. It seems like it would probably be a good place to hang it. I didn't put any nectar in it yet. Nectar is just water, sugar water. I think it's um, one fourth of a cup of sugar to one cup of water. That's the ratio. So that's a hummingbird feeder, fools. If you like that, or uh, you know, liked any of our videos really, just feel free to hit the like button and uh, subscribe because we love subscribers. If you ring the bell, it'll let you know when we have a new video. Is the bell over here now? I think it's down. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. We had a good time. Uh, you know, it's always fun to hang out with you guys. We're the Jackson No Trade. Bam.